Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. So what we have here is the $45 iPod LUT. Um, in the first part we just were unboxing them and testing them. In part two we started to swap around parts and see if we could get any of the iPods working. And in part three we're going to be doing the same thing, just swapping around parts. And hopefully we will be able to get um, some working iPods out of this. So anyways, let's get right into the video. So on the uh, left we have the iPod that only charges when it's turned off because the charge port is bent. And on the right we have the iPod which as you can see only part of the screen works. So we're going to be swapping the screen from this one over to the other one. Obviously it's cracked but it's better that we have at least one working iPod even if it's cracked than two iPods with major functional issues. So the biggest challenge will just be getting the screen off without it like crumbling um, because on these iPods they're just kind of glued into place so when they crack there's really just not much like there's no frame or anything so all of the parts are just loose um, so I'm being more careful than usual especially with all the adhesive to try to lift it up without causing any damage and as you can see obviously some of the glass is stuck to the bottom but I'm going to um, as you can see I'm lining it up kind of in order and I'm going to try to just manually transfer all of the pieces. This obviously doesn't make much sense to do from a uh, like a financial standpoint. It's not very profitable or anything like that. But I do think um, it is fun to get some of these iPods working if I can for free. I think it's just fun to do. And it keeps stuff out of e-waste like this iPod, if I can repair it successfully, might be useful to someone even if it's damaged, especially if they can't afford a nicer looking iPod. So yeah, that's why I do what I do, because I'm sure people will ask why are you bothering with these really damaged iPods if you're not going to replace the cracked screen anyways, but yeah, that's why. I just think it's fun is basically why. So moving over to this iPod, I don't have to be quite as careful because the screen is already damaged anyways. So you know, I'm using my metal pry tool, which I wasn't using on the other one. Um, and as you can see, it is quite dirty in here, but that's okay. Um, so we just have to remove all of this excess glass, remove that shield so we can remove the digitizer, um, and then we can hopefully install the new screen, or not the new screen, the damaged screen that works a little better than this one. As you can see, it is very annoying to remove the digitizer on these iPod Touch 4s. You have to like lift the board up and um, disconnect it from the back. And you also have to be careful not to lift it up too much because you will rip the volume and power button flex cable which is soldered on. Or you could rip the battery connector on the other side. So yeah, it's not pleasant and you can see here that I'm really struggling to <laughs> connect the digitizer. It's not a fun experience. Apple did a horrible job of making this iPod at all repairable. Um, the iPod 5, 6, and 7 are all built um, the same as each other, and they're a lot better um, repairability-wise than this one, but they're still not very repairable. It is a shame that the iPod touches have to be so anti-repair. But what you can see me doing here is trying to unbend the housing because now I ran into my next problem um, because this is common on the iPod Touch 4 as well as the iPads when they're dropped on the corner it dents in and then the screen won't sit right. Um, there's professional tools to bend these back but they're really expensive so there's not really it's not really an option for me. I saw Hugh Jeffries um, he did a video on the iPad Mini 3 and he had a pretty interesting technique with a hammer on the back of a pry tool to unbend the corner. I'll probably try that next time because it looked pretty effective, but yeah, I, um, this was before that video came out and I even had that idea. So I was just trying to, you know, bend it back with pry tools. And then I used pliers, which seemed to work better. It's not perfect, but it is a lot better than it was before. And the screen should sit at least somewhat better. So So uh, yeah, you can see again I'm trying to connect the digitizer. I tried to do it the night before and I was tired and I just couldn't get it. So I picked up um, now and I 
did it off camera. It took a very long time, but I did finally get it after lots of frustration. Um, so, yeah. So with the digitizer connected, I now just need to connect the LCD cable, and as you can see, it is booting up, but there are some dead pixels on the screen, unfortunately. So I'm just making sure the screen works before I put the shield in and seal it down. I'm not testing every function, just the screen. I'm going to sell these iPods just kind of as is, so if something doesn't work, whatever. So now I'm just going to reinstall the screen shield um, and then I'm going to glue the screen down with B7000 glue which you know you should not use B7000 glue on something like this like I mean maybe it's okay but I mean it's much better to use the adhesive but obviously I'm not fixing this iPod it's still in very crude condition so there's no sense in me going out and buying the perfect adhesive for it. And I am mentioning in the description of my eBay listing, I literally said that it's crudely glued down. Um, so no surprises to the buyer. Um, and once I glue it down, I am going to clamp it into place and leave it for a while so the glue can set. Um, and then I put, um, there's obviously a missing glass, which I kept. And I just kind of put that into place and glue it, kind of like a puzzle, um, which you'll see in a second. So surprisingly, it fit in pretty well. So yeah, it was fun. So while I was cleaning this, the little ring around the camera fell out, and I mean it's just cosmetic, but I wanted to glue it back in, so I used the B700, sorry about my hair in the camera there, I used my B700 and then I just stuck it into place and then waited for it to dry um, to clean up the adhesive residue. So now that the adhesive is dry, I can just clean up the excess with isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip. So now we are going to unclamp the iPod um, and clean it off real quick and then make sure it's working. Okay, so we now have a working iPod and you might wonder why I spent my time doing this um, I don't know I mean I guess it's fun to do for me um, it's not like these are worth much so it's not like I can sell them for much but hey I mean one working but damaged iPod is better than two damaged not working iPods so yeah I don't know why there's these um, spots on the screen that weren't there before some of them look like pressure marks that might go away but most of them appear to be dead pixels um, but oh well, it does work, so good enough. And then I did reassemble this one just kind of for fun. Um, if I can press the button here. So that's semi-working. Obviously it doesn't charge and we ripped the speaker, but yeah. So cool, we have one working iPod. And you can see there is some marks here from me unbending it, but oh well. And this iPod is on iOS 6.1, which is cool. So now we are going to take this iPod, which has bad touch and obviously no home button, and we're going to put this screen on it.
So I forgot to mention which iPod this is. If you don't recognize it, this is the one with the dead NAND, um, but it does have a good screen, supposedly. I mean, it is cracked, but assuming the touch works, this should uh, make that other iPod work at least better than it did before. So you can see now I'm moving the cracked but functional, hopefully, screen over to the working iPod uh, logic board assembly. Um, and then I'm just going to screw it in and then use the B700 glue to glue the, the display into place. And then just like the other iPod, um, I kept those broken glass shards on the side. I'm going to kind of put them back into place with some glue. So now that I've given it time to dry, I can take the clamps off the iPod and see if everything is working. Um, it does have a passcode, so we'll have to restore it, but um, yeah. So I did unfortunately rip the flex cable for the uh, power button and volume buttons. So yeah, those don't work anymore and they're soldered on, so I'm not gonna bother replacing them. But oh well, at least the screen works, so it's more functional than it was before. But it is really unfortunate that I ripped those. So here it is. It works, except for the volume buttons and power buttons, because I sadly ripped the flex cable. And there are some dead pixels you can see um, from swapping the screen over that just kind of got there. Um, yeah, it works. Um, there was no SHSH blobs, not that I would have been able to dump them with the bad power button, or at least not very easily. So it's just on 6.1.6, .6, but at least it's more functional than it was before. Just to keep my spare parts in one place, I did reassemble the other iPod with the dead NAND and now the bad touchscreen. So moving right along to our next iPod, we have the iPod which had a cracked screen, but just one single crack and it was disabled, but the home button was bad so we couldn't restore it. So yeah, I'm just going to open that and fix the home button so we can restore this iPod. So we can see our problem here. There's supposed to be like a little black nub in the middle of that button and there's not. So it must have just fell off over time, which is common. Like on the iPhone 4, there was a recall for the power button. I mean, I think the iPhone 5 as well. And those issues were mostly caused by that same thing. Um, so anyways, I did um, put this iPod to the side to see if the, any of the other iPod 4s, um, you know, that we were taking parts from had a good home button assembly that I could take it from, but unfortunately none of them did. The only ones that did were the ones that I had to use the home button assembly in on another iPod. Um, so I did have to um, break my goal of using um, no spare parts. Like I wanted to just be swapping parts and not use any extra parts. Um, but yeah, in this case I did have to use a part that was not included with this lot. Um, but yeah, I just transferred, I was going to transfer the entire shield over with the home button, but then I decided just to keep everything as original as possible, I just swapped over the home button flex cable itself. These go for about like $6, which is more than I thought they would. Um, but yeah, I had some laying around from previous iPod lots I bought in the past, so thankfully I didn't have to spend anything on this.
I was about to connect the screen when I noticed that there was some corrosion on the uh, LCD connector, so I decided to grab my toothbrush and clean that off real quick. There might be corrosion in other places, but I honestly didn't see any. And these iPods are very hard to take the logic board out without ripping flex cables, so that wasn't something I was going to do. But yeah, I didn't see any corrosion in other places, so I assume it was a very minor water damage. Um, so yeah, I just cleaned it off real quick and then closed up the iPod. So as you can see, it has been restored now. Um, the home button works. 6.1.6 .6 because there is no SHSH blobs. Everything works, um, though I have noticed that um, about that corrosion we saw earlier, there is some like white spots on the screen, which I thought were just typical use. But there's, you know, enough where it'd probably be from water damage. And there's even like a little bit of dirt near the um, battery indicator, if you can see that underneath the screen, but very minor damage. It worked perfectly fine, so this is a success. Um, there's only a single hairline crack, so yeah. So now comes the painful part of removing these stickers. I could have probably done this a lot quicker with like um, adhesive remover or something, but I just used isopropyl alcohol and you know just various different tools to get it off. Um, yeah, I really wish that they would stop um, putting stickers on things like this. Like I get they need it for inventory and labeling and stuff, I get it, but I wish that, you know, if they were to use stickers, that they could use something, you know, less strong, like um, something with the adhesive strength of like a sticky note, because, you know, then it wouldn't come off, but it also, you know, would come off if you tried to get it off. Um, yeah, I spent probably an hour at least getting off all these stickers, and I didn't record all of it, obviously, because that's boring, but uh, just showing you the process of me doing it on a few of them, so. Okay, so we are now done fixing these iPods, or at least we've done everything that I'm going to do in this video. So let's just quickly go over everything. So first of all, we have the iPod Touch first generations. Um, so yeah, there's this one, which has a cracked digitizer, but a good LCD. The LCD does have those like tiny spots. I don't know if you can see those. Maybe if I zoom in. Yeah, it's pretty hard to see, but there's like very, very tiny spots, which is common on the first generation touch. I don't know why that is. They're like these um, RGB, like, you know, little like dead pixels almost. Um, if you guys know why that happens, let me know, because it seems to only happen on the first gen touch. It's weird. Um, so yeah, there's that one. And then there's this one, which initially wouldn't charge, and I don't know what I did different, but it started charging. Um, the back doesn't stay on very well, and it is a little bent. Um, but yeah, this one works. There's some dust in between the layers and a big dead spot, but it does work, so that's cool. Um, and that has a good digitizer, so we could swap um, the digitizer from this to here to get one good iPod. Then we have this iPod second generation. Um, I don't honestly remember which is which at this point, so I'm just going to do it kind of right now with you, see what works. Okay, we don't have volume buttons. This one seems to have bad volume buttons, but works otherwise, at least for my limited testing. None of these were tested 100%, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, this is an 8 gig touch. Oh yeah, I forgot to say the storage for these, but I said it earlier in the video, 8 gigs. Um, and then we have this touch second generation with... Yeah, that button doesn't feel great. It kind of works, though. Um, and the home button works. Okay, this one has all of, good, all of the buttons are good. There does seem to be some liquid there. I don't know if that was from when I was cleaning it accidentally or if I just didn't notice it earlier. But there is some sort of liquid damage in that guy. Um, and then this one was working, um, but now the backlight's dead. So, like, you can see I have my desk light right here. So that's the reason you can see it. Um... But yeah, um, it's basically impossible to see because the backlight is dead. Um, and I would say that I have no idea how this randomly happened, but when I was cleaning it, I noticed the, um, I don't know if I can show it, in the charge port, there's obvious signs of rust. And these iPod um, second gens, and maybe the third gens too, I don't know, but they were known for um, getting ridiculous amounts of water damage and still functioning. So my guess, like considering this worked initially, my guess is that this has a lot of water damage in it, um, and it just 
killed the backlight when I was cleaning it because I, uh, yeah, the power button doesn't work and I was trying to get it to work without opening it. Um, just for kicks, like a lot of times um, with these iPods, it's just dirt. And since these aren't worth much, um, you wouldn't usually want to do this, but I like dipped the power button part in isopropyl alcohol, like right in this corner um, to see if it would uh, loosen it up. But what I'm guessing happened is um, uh, the, uh, well, actually, I was going to say that the screen connector is in this corner. So maybe it was corroded and I moved something in a weird way. I guess that's possible, but this is the digitizer connector. You'd think a backlight issue would be the LCD connector, which is more towards here. Um, but either way, in another video, I might I might open this um, for a video. No promises though, and see if I can fix it because I'm sure the water damage in here will be very interesting and pretty bad. Um, yeah, the volume buttons work and the home button works. It's just the power button and now our backlight. Oh wait, the power button just worked that time. Okay, very occasionally if you press hard enough, it'll work, but um, yeah, that's that. And then this is another eight gig iPod touch second generation. Um, Oh yeah, these. this is the one with the cracked, the physically cracked buttons. It's like cracked on both sides. I don't know how you do that, but yeah, they don't really work too well. <laughs> Power button kind of works, but yeah, this needs some work too. It's pretty common for the volume and power buttons to fail on these. And then we have the third generation iPod Touch, 32 gigabytes. This is the jailbroken one. Um, but yeah, it is working. I think all the buttons work on this one. Yeah, all the buttons work. It just has a cracked screen. Maybe there's other issues, I don't know, but it's working, it's 32 gigs. The cracks aren't that bad. So yeah, that's a nice one. Then we have the fourth generation iPod touches, or actually before we get to the fourth gen, because those are like the best ones, I'll save them for last. Um, let's just move on to the ones that we couldn't fix. And obviously these other ones have issues like, um, you know, I was showing, um, but these are the ones that um, are severely broken. Um, so this is the one with the dead NAND that just boot loops and you can't restore it. Um, I did reassemble these with the um, part from the other iPod I was taking them from. So I did put this screen on here, even though it doesn't work just because I don't know, I felt like it, I guess. Um, this is the one that only lit up white um, and there was water damage. And I think the LCD, had water damage too, which is probably what caused the um, LCD to fail, but it does seem like it needs a new LCD. I wasn't able to recover it, but now it's not really doing anything at all. Unless if I just need to charge it, but yeah, I'm not like getting any blank screen or anything. It's just completely dead now, so that's bizarre. Um, but yeah, that was not a successful one. Now that I think about it, this screen isn't as bad as some of the other ones, so maybe I'll put this screen if I can manage to get it off without cracking it more, I might put this on one of the more badly cracked ones. This is the one that only charges when it's turned off. Um, and I put this screen on, which actually responds to touch, but the LCD isn't viewable in most places. Um, but again, this one wouldn't turn on and I did try to unbend the pins and another one fell off. So maybe that's why it won't charge. Um, but anyways, yeah, those are the, you know, fail iPods, I guess. And these aren't even worth enough to be worth selling, honestly. So I'm just going to keep these around. Um, I guess I'll just keep them. Um, now for the iPods, this is the one with a bad battery. But okay, I the battery doesn't work. But I did a very stupid modification. I had an iPod touch second generation battery laying around. So I like forced it to fit in there, but the screen does not sit properly. Um, obviously this is not really the safest thing to do. I I would never sell anything like this, not to mention my soldering skills are pretty awful. So yeah, I would never sell this, it's totally not safe. Um, but again, just kind of like a project I was doing for fun. Um, but yeah, it does work. And this does prove that a new battery would fix the problem. So maybe one day I will properly install a proper fourth generation battery in this, but um, yeah, again, I'm not gonna sell this. I'll just keep it for now. Then we have this one with a cracked LCD that somehow isn't affecting the touch responsivity at all. Um, again, I haven't fully tested it, but I think all the buttons work and everything. So, oh yeah, and this is a, uh, I assume it's a, yeah, it's a 16 gigabyte. It's very hard to see because it's like sanded off here. Oh, uh, and then the bad battery one's eight gig. 
Um, and then we have the engraved eight gigabyte iPod with a bad home button and the Drake wallpaper. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one seems to work minus the home button. Then we have this one, which, is, which has the screen from the iPod with the dead NAND. It's got some dead spots and cracks, but... Oh yeah, and this is the one that I accidentally ripped the power button and volume button because I'm an idiot. But other than that, I think it works. So that's cool. Then we have this one, which had a bad home button. Um, this is the only iPod from the lot where I had to use parts from outside the lot. So like for all these other iPods, I fixed them simply from combining parts. But for this iPod, I replaced the shield um, with one that has a good home button flex cable. Or actually, I didn't even replace the shield. I just replaced the flex cable um, because I had one laying around and there wasn't any spares. Um, you can buy a home button flex cable for like five bucks, eight bucks. I was surprised. I thought they'd be a little cheaper, but regardless, they're not that expensive. Um, and I totally could have waited like, you know, for another iPod lot to take it from, but I had the part, so I just put it in. This one has a single hairline crack, but it's good otherwise, and it seems to work fully. It's eight gigs, so yeah, this is a really good one. This is one of the least cracks, cracked ones. And we have this depressing iPod, uh, 16 gig. The back looks pretty good. I was surprised at how shiny this was when I removed the sticker, because the sticker was hiding a lot. Um, but yeah, uh, it looks great on the back. The front, not so much. Um, yeah, I really don't know how you do this. I, surely someone must have just like slid it. Um, but yeah, this does seem to work, um, other than the screen imperfections, but. And then we have this guy, which, yeah, um, it's pretty cracked. Um, it, it does work. I think this one does fully work. Yep, just dead pixels, lots of cracks. I took this screen from one of the dead iPods. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it stayed perfectly flat, but it was pretty hard because this was really dented. I had to like unbend it. Um, so yeah, I did okay. It's especially hard to transfer. Um, you guys don't know how hard it is if you haven't worked on one of these. The adhesive is pretty strong, so it's hard to transfer like a broken screen without breaking it more. So I'm kind of impressed with myself that I got like even these tiny pieces back where they're supposed to be. Um, but yeah, I won't sell that for much at all. Um, and then this is the 64 gigabyte iPod Touch 4th generation, which is jailbroken and clearly needs some work. Uh, after reconnecting the screen, it did light up, um, but it looks like they tore the speaker flex cable. Um, so that will have to be resoldered. Um, once I get better at soldering, I might attempt this. Um, so stay tuned. Obviously the screen needs to be seated down properly. It's lifting up, but I'm not gonna do that now since it needs to be opened and serviced. Um, yeah, so it has bad volume buttons as well. I think it's missing screws because this one's like pushed in. I think the pushed in one works if you hit it just right. I don't know if the flex cable is bad or not. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, this iPod is good. Also, the battery seems to drain fast, but I've noticed that iPod touches with the um, percentage hack thing show a less accurate reading. So I'm not sure if the battery is really bad or not. But yeah, this one does have a good screen. Um, since I won't be fixing this one right away, I think I'll take this screen off and put it on another iPod. I actually have this iPod 4 that I've had for a very long time as a just as a decoration, which it doesn't have a screen. Where it has the um, digitizer. I like separated the LCD from the digitizer, and it's just a um, like a transparent see-through piece of glass. So it's like I had it as a cool decoration, but that iPod does work. So I might use this screen on that iPod. Um, since I do want a working iPod 4 for some future videos, stay tuned. Um, but yeah, so that is all of the iPods. Uh, let me know what you think. Did you think this was a good purchase or did you think that I could have done better? Anyways, let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Here's the iPod decoration, by the way. You can see the digitizer is still on there. It looks super cool. I just feel bad because it's not actually broken like this iPod works. Um, but I didn't have one that like the internals looked intact that didn't work. Um, you know, I guess this one maybe with the bad NAND, maybe I could use as the decoration iPod, but anyways, yeah, that's that.